councils in England are paying £1.7 billion a year to house people in temporary homes. We're going to read into this more from The Guardian, guys. Let's go. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Elite here with an article from The Guardian with the headline that councils in England are paying £1.7 billion a year to house people in temporary homes. The annual cost would be enough to build around 100,000 new homes over five years as families are forced to cram into hotels and B&Bs. That money would be enough for 100,000 new homes, guys. Just let that sink in just for a moment, given the current housing situation that we find ourselves in. Now, there is one little caveat I have to point out, is that the Conservative Party have built, over the last 13 years, they have built the most amount of houses that's ever been built in um, the most amount of houses. But um, it doesn't change the fact that they haven't built anywhere near enough and needed for people. And the other issue is, of course, is that many houses have been taken, by, uh, taken and taken up by landlords and private uh, landlords for their own benefit of the use of making a profit basically passive income as another term for it so that's also taken away homes as well but uh, 1.7 billion pounds a year is trying to get people into temporary homes when there's severe lack of them and this is also being compounded by the situation taking place with regards to asylum seekers in our country as well where we still have a lot of asylum seekers in hotels we know that they're trying to push them into barges um, and other other places where where they can kind of be shifted off 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 towns and, and that to try and paint this picture that um, that they are an issue and they are they are an issue but from on that perspective when it comes to asylum seekers obviously the fact that they can't even be able to work is, is, a, is a major issue and it's costing us taxpayers for them just to be sitting there sort of things so that that's not helping us as well there's lots of uh, there's lots of little mitigating things that a Labour government can do when they come into power that can help minimise this cost. And um, their plan, they obviously their plan is to build 1.5 million homes within the next five years. Now that's still, and I know some people since I've said that it can be achievable. A lot of people have said that it's not achievable. Now I would say if you don't aim high, when, when if you don't aim high in a situation where we desperately need new homes um, we need more social housing we need more council housing um, to give uh, to get people out off off uh, the streets and into homes because it really is massively important to say the least <clears throat> i believe there's lots of benefits um that there can be yeah, from a labor government i know there are some criticisms obviously of them but i do believe that um, um a, a change in government is something that we are desperately desperately needed as i'm sure you most of you watching will agree so a surging people being forced to live in bed and breakfasts and other temporary homes in england is costing the taxpayer 1.7 billion pounds a year shameful council data analyzed by the local government association has revealed the worsened shortage is of the worsened shortage of social housing and increasing unfold unaffordability private rents are among reasons councils are now paying 104,000 households to live in the temporary accommodation more than any time in the past 25 years the closure of the home office funded hotels for afghan asylum seekers in the coming weeks was expected to exaggerate the problem town hall leaders said there as a call for an emergency summit for next week to discuss the still rapidly increased costs in which they say was wholly unsustainable housing campaigners said temporary accommodation including cramped hostels and grossly b and beeps where family members are forced to share beds and children have no space to play or do their homework in those situations where, where you know, the kids' perspective, how is this? How is this a child's life? It's a horrible situation for a child. You know, where where is them not just to enjoy life but to do homework? And in the end, they, they end up forcing to be outside all the time, which is not the end of the world. But it's still, it's still where is their space? You know, children need to have their own space, and they're not getting that. And it can affect their growth um, from a young age, both uh, from a mental point of view as well. So this graph here, this is, this is a graph uh, sources from the Department of Leveling Up Housing Community. Um, this is the number of homeless household, households living in temporary accommodation 
in England is the highest uh, since the records began. So the records began back in 1998. The red line represents all households in temporary accommodation. The blue line represents those with children. And if you can see there, as it comes all the way up to um, up to from 1998 all the way to 2023, you can see there in the red line there that the graph has gone up the highest ever, highest since record began according to this graph. And also, if you look at children there, although be between um, it had started to dip um, under a Labour government from 2010 onwards, it seems to it steadily increase there. Uh, between uh, 2016, I would say, and 2020 for children, it was kind of steady. Um, it dipped a little bit, but uh, since uh, last few years, it's gone gone up again there, as you can see see from those graphs. So um, there's no data available for the number of households in temporary accommodation with children before 2002, which is why, if you're wondering why the graph isn't going far back in 1998, they haven't got that data. So the annual cost of paying rents would be enough to build around 100,000 new homes over the past five years. It is twice as high as it was in 2015, 2016. It rose to 1.6 $1. $1. billion, billion last year. It's now risen to, again by 9%. Stephen Holt, the leader of Eastbourne Borough Council, which is hosting a summit on Tuesday with more than 100 councils, said the situation is stark. Councils providing the, safe, providing the safety net for the most vulnerable people, and that safety net is a real risk of failing. More than 130,000 children are living in temporary housing, the highest ever number. The LGA, the council's umbrella group, is demanding that Chancellor Jeremy Hunt use his coming autumn budget of budget statement to increase ben housing benefits and to make uh, more private rented homes affordable to people on welfare and to reform housing rules to allow councils to build more social housing. But yeah, this is what we mentioned. There's a lack of social housing. The rules are making it impossible for councils to build homes because there's always something in the way. And they need to labour the government when they come in. They need to wish to remove those barriers so that there's more leniency to building homes. Now, I understand the whole not in my backyard reference. Well, I'm afraid that reference needs to go out the window because we have a housing crisis and people need homes to live in. Council budgets are being squeezed and the chronic shortage of suitable housing across the country means that councils are increasingly having to turn to alternative options for accommodation at a significant cost. Yeah, people are paying well over the odds just to find a find find a place to, to stay, a place to live, and it's outrageous. Uh, says Darren Rockwell, the leader of the London Borough of Barking and Dagenham at the LGA's housing spokesperson. Councils need to be given the powers and resources to build enough social homes for their residents so they can create a more prosper prosperous place to live with a healthier and happier community. The LGA says asylum and resettlement schemes were added to the problem and increased pace and scale for asylum decisions. The closure of the home Home office run hotels for Afghan refugees over the next few weeks and ongoing support for the homeless. Ukraine and Afghan households are increasing pressure on councils' capacities to house people who otherwise face homelessness. It's, it's difficult. And when they are getting really, really stretched, the councils, they end up offering them places uh, places um, out of London or out of the South East to try and give them at least some kind of accommodation. But the problem is, is that people don't like to shift from one part of the country to another and it's, it's very very harsh to do to do for people to do that the number of households in temporary accommodation in the previous peaked in 2004 before falling steadily according to the house of commons library this trend changed in december 2011 when the number of households in temporary accommodation began to rise year on year the housing charity shelter warned last year that temporary accommodation was too often not temporary it said two-thirds of family have been in supposedly transitional housing over five a year, rising to four-fifths of in London. Some families have been there for more than a decade. It was creating a new kind of government-provided housing, it said, but one without tendency right specific standards and effective overnight. It's shameful that thousands of children across the country are growing up without a safe and secure place to call home, says Polly Neese, the chief executive of Shelter. As homelessness reaches record levels, the government cannot continue to ignore the crisis as an immediate as an immediate solution. The government must use the autumn statement to unfreeze housing benefits so people can afford their rents. However, the only lasting solution to the housing emergency is to invest in genuine affordable social homes with rents tied to local incomes. <sighs> and the government spokesperson bit. We're committed to reducing the needs for temporary accommodation and preventing homelessness before it occurs in the first place, which is why we're providing councils for one billion through the homelessness prevention grant over the next five years. We're also delivering a fair, fairer rental 
private rental sector for tenants and landlords, even though the Rentless Reform Bill, which included abolishing, which included includes the abolishing the Section Twenty One No Fault Evictions. Yeah, the same um, Section Twenty One No Fault Evictions that has been kicked canned down the road, guys. At the time of this recorded, obviously. They say they vote. They always say this that they've they've invested this or they've given councils this. We hear it all before, guys. We hear it all before, and um, yeah, basically, uh, you're on your own. Sort it out yourself. Is what the government's basically saying. Um, not helping anyone really with the situation. Um, it's devastating. It's devastating for people for for those who are just trying to find a home. And it's even worse for children. This is badly affects children's and their education and their future as well. All these things just don't help anyone. They really, really don't. We need more housing. We need it as soon as possible. And we need to make it as easy as possible for them. Um, more social housing, uh, council houses. Um, get enough the uh, get as much on the brown of the brown fields as possible as well. Obviously, they're going to be end up some going to be on green, on the sun green, which unfortunately is inevitable. But given the situation, it's pretty desperate right now. So sooner the better, I would say on this uh, on that. But um, yeah, but council's paying one point seven billion pounds a year when that money can easily go somewhere else, guys. It can be much much less if if we put our if we put our hearts and minds into it. We really can be we can make a difference. And hopefully, uh, the sooner we have a general election, the sooner we have a new government in, properly policies, they'll have policies and that in place to hopefully help councils as best they possibly can in this situation. But what do you guys think? What do you guys think of this current situation? We're paying £1.7 billion a year, specifically in England, guys. This is not in regards to Scotland or Wales or Northern Ireland. Um, what do you guys make of the homelessness, temporary homes? What should the current government be doing now, guys? Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think they should be doing. Like, share, and subscribe as always. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to catch you all very, very soon.